Hi, I'm Alicia Crawl, the Director of Community with the Carpentries. This video provides you with the information you need to serve in the role of a community session host for our organization. Please note that all the information presented in this video can be found in the Carpentries Handbook, which includes a link to these presentation slides. Links are also available in the description of this video on YouTube. I want to briefly go over the agenda for the presentation. We will start by going over the types of community sessions offered through the Carpentries and how to schedule a session. We'll transition to go over all you need to know to lead a community session and spend some time covering the what ifs. This will help you prepare for any issues you may encounter while leading a session. We'll then end with next steps and sharing resources to support you in serving in this role. So let's get started. So who is a community session host? It is any member of the Carpentries community who facilitates a community session. No matter how you have engaged with the Carpentries in the past, anyone can serve as a community session host as long as you abide by our organization's code of conduct. We will cover the types of community sessions that can be offered by members of our community in the next few slides. No matter the type of session, they can be led at any time, on any topic, and in any language, which is determined by you, the host of the call. The first type of community session is the community discussion session. These are structured or flexibly structured sessions on any topic relevant to the community that can be in any format of the host choosing. So some examples, if you're interested in learning from community members who have relevant experience or expertise on a topic of interest, you could host a panel as a community discussion session. If you have a colleague who you would love the Carpentries community to hear from, you can invite them to present at a community discussion um, session that you host. You can also host networking sessions. So if you like gaming, for instance, you could host a community discussion, discussion session to lead the community in an online game. There are so many options and we urge you to be creative. There is a special type of community discussion session that we have been offering for the past couple of years to welcome new members of the community to our organization. We are always looking for hosts to help support these. The agenda includes time for networking, covers ways to engage with our organization, and includes announcements and upcoming opportunities. If hosting a session like this is of interest, you can inform us on the onboarding form that will be shared with you after you email the community development team that you have completed watching this onboarding video. The second type of community session is the skill up session. These are sessions offering professional development opportunities for the community where the host teaches relevant skills. When you, we use the word relevant, that includes a lot of areas of interest to our community. So some examples include teaching practices, coding, lesson development, community building, institutional change, or even physical fitness and mindfulness. Everyone brings expertise to the community and this is a great way to share that knowledge with others. The final session type is a collaboration session. These are sessions providing dedicated time and space to co-develop a community resource or to co-work on any community activity. Examples might include co-working on a lesson in the Carpentries Incubator, addressing a backlog of GitHub issues in our curriculum, or co-working to develop a skill-up session if you would like to collaborate with other members of the community to pull a program together. I'm now going to um, go through how to schedule a community um, session. So the first thing you will need to, do, um, need to do is sign up to host a call. These are scheduled quarterly. A Calendly link will be shared with all the session hosts via our communication channels on the date specified for each quarter. So that's November 15th for um, the first quarter of the next year, February 15th for the second quarter, May 15th for the third quarter, and August 15th for the fourth quarter. The schedule period is open for a minimum of two weeks. When signing up to host in Calendly, you will be given options to select a one hour block for programs, um, programs lasting an hour or less, or a two hour time block for programs lasting more than one hour, but under or at two hours. This is a screenshot of the Calendly interface where you will go to schedule a session. When you get to the landing page, there is an option to select between a one or two hour community session time slot. If you need to schedule more than two hours for your session, you will need to email the community development team at community at carpentries.org. Once you've selected a date and time for your session, a form will appear. This is a screenshot of that form requesting your name, email, type of session, session title, description of session, the maximum number of attendees, and the language of your session. 
If you are leading a skill up session, be sure to include any prerequisites required for attendees in the description. Once the form has been submitted, you will receive an automated email confirming the session along with a calendar invitation. The confirmation email will include details for logging in and claiming host in Zoom. Claiming host gives you access to all the host features like setting up a waiting room and breakout rooms. All the information entered into the Calendly link will automatically generate a reservation on the Carpentries community calendar and pre-populate the community sessions etherpad. This is a screenshot of the information that is automatically generated in the etherpad through the quarterly scheduling process. It includes sessions like title and description, the session date and time, as well as a link for a community member to find the time in their time zone. You will also find your name and email address listed for each of the calls you have signed up to lead. Information on how to join the call is included at the top of the etherpad, and there is space under each session for community members to sign up for those calls they wish to attend. The number of slots to sign up will correspond to the number you included as the maximum number of attendees on the Calendly form. There are two exceptions to not scheduling during this quarterly workflow. The first is for sessions lasting more than two hours or will occur over multiple days. If that is the case, you will need to schedule by emailing the community development team. Again, that email is community at carpentries.org. The second exception is if you have a need to schedule a session between closing of one quarterly period and before the opening of the next quarterly period. However, with this option, we ask that you limit doing this because all of the information must then be entered manually by a member of the core team, and that can take some time. If you need to cancel a discussion session and no one has signed up to attend, please add this session has been canceled in all caps and bold above the session title in the etherpad and strike through the relevant content, which includes the title, description, the dates and times, and the sign up area. Once this is done, please contact the community development team to inform us of the cancellation. We will update the community calendar and remove the session from the etherpad at the appropriate time. If you need to cancel but individuals have already signed up to attend, please do not delete their names and contact information when you strike through the content. Once you've contacted the community development team, we will notify the individuals who signed up that the session has been canceled. So we're now going to transition to leading a community session. So before you lead a session, there are a few things to note. Be sure to sign on at least five minutes before the call so you can welcome community members as they sign on. Introduce yourself as the host and add a link to where the notes will be captured in the Zoom chat. Add the agenda for your session to the notes. You can use the community sessions etherpad by copying and pasting your agenda under the space where participants sign up to attend. If you plan to use your own notes document, add that link to the etherpad. It can sometimes be difficult to take notes while facilitating a discussion. If you do not have a co-host but would like to capture notes, ask if someone would be interested in volunteering to serve as the note taker. Once you're logged in, you will need to claim host. A host code will be sent to you for leading your discussion as part of the automated quarterly scheduling process. Claiming host will give you access to host features like polls and breakout rooms, and um, that will not be available to you otherwise. So how do you activate the host code? Um, when you sign up uh, into the, um, with the Zoom link provided, you will click on participants on the feature panel to display the list of participants. There will be a button available to claim host. Click on it, and then you will be asked to enter a host key. As a reminder, the host key will be sent in your confirmation email when you schedule your session and in a reminder email a few days before your session starts. Once entered, click claim, and all the host features will display for you. Closed captioning is automatically enabled for all Carpentry Zoom rooms. Participants can select or deselect the feature if they want to view or not view the transcript using the show captions button. If a participant in your session selects to show captioning on their screen, a pop-up message will appear with the message, a participant has enabled closed captioning. No action is required on your part, so you may choose to close the message. Depending on the number of people who are attending your session or how you would like for participants to engage with each other, you may want to use the breakout rooms feature. There will be a breakout rooms button included alongside all of the other feature buttons available to you as the host. Once you click on it, it will allow you to assign a specific number of breakout rooms and indicate how you would like them to be assigned automatically, 
manually or let participants choose the room. We do not cover all of the Zoom features in this presentation. However, if you are new to Zoom or would like more information on how to facilitate sessions on the platform, you can email the community development team to have someone walk you through it. And we're very happy to do this. During the session, you will want to do the following. Start your session with a welcome, introductions, and remind participants that our code of conduct applies to the session. Let participants know that they can comment or answer questions by raising their hand or typing their response into the chat. Everyone has individual preferences and in how they like to contribute, so be mindful of that as you host your calls. Always try to leave at least five minutes at the end of the call to see if there are any final thoughts or comments. This is just a great way to transition the discussion to wrap up the call on time and always end um, thanking attendees for their participation and contributions. Um, once you are done with the session, you will need to follow a few steps. Archive the Etherpad by clicking Save Revision, which displays it as, as a star in the Features panel. This will save all the notes from your call. Second, fill out the host questionnaire. There will be a link provided on the Etherpad for your community session. It will ask you to copy over the list of attendees who um, attended as part of instructor checkout. The word checkout will appear after their name, but be sure to remove no-shows when you copy the list over. Once you have completed the questionnaire, you can clear all the information for your session from the Etherpad. So this includes the date, time, the list of attendees, and all of the notes. If you want a copy of the notes, be sure to export the content of the Etherpad and remind attendees to do the same if they want a copy. This slide includes an image of the Etherpad. To archive the Etherpad, um, you select slate, Save Revision, which displays as a star in the Features panel. This will save all the notes from your call. To export the Etherpad, select the Import Export um, feature, which displays as two arrows in opposite directions on the Features panel. This slide is also an image of the Etherpad that we shared in an earlier slide. It highlights the area where you will find the link to the host questionnaire. The host questionnaire collects basic information about the session, like number of attendees, but the most important thing to do is copy over the names of the individuals who attended as part of checkout. So as you lead a community session, there are a lot of different scenarios that can arise. It's difficult to prepare yourself for any and everything, but we have compiled a list of common questions, um, the what ifs, that will help you get a better sense of what you may encounter. So what if someone breaks the code of conduct or someone had a report of misconduct? Well, the code of conduct is on the agenda for um, all the community sessions. It should be referenced at the start of each call and you can ask participants if they have any questions about it before continuing. It is helpful to add a link to the code of conduct in the chat so participants can easily reference it. Um, but what if someone breaks the code of conduct and that violation has to be reported? There are detailed um, guidelines in the Carpentries Handbook on how reports should be submitted and how they will be handled once reported. If you have not yet fully read through the Code of Conduct, um, we ask that you do so before leading a community session. So what if someone talks down to other people or negatively disrupts the session? This is why it is important to familiarize yourself with the Code of Conduct and remind participants of it at the beginning of each call. This type of behavior would be in violation of the policy and you could ask the person to leave. What if you do not know the answer to someone's questions and no one in the room does either? It is totally fine if you do not know all the answers. In such a situation, you can inform participants of the various channels to bring questions to the community. So that includes our Slack workspace and our topic box mailing list. Um, they can always send their questions to team at carpentries.org as well to get a response um, from a member of the core team. Well, what if there is no co-host or note taker and the session is fully booked? Um, as a host, you are more than welcome to take a few notes. However, there is no need to take down every single thing that is said. Um, note down important points, um, making sure to add links to useful information. Also encourage the participants to contribute to the notes on the community sessions etherpad. If you know you need a note taker for your session, you can reach out to the community session host communication channels to identify someone who may be available to support the session, or you can email the community development team. Um, so what if I forget to complete the host questionnaire? The host questionnaire lets the core team know who attended sessions as part of their instructor checkout requirement. 
If this step is not done, the participants of your session will not have updated profiles for their checkout, and it will take a lot of administration to solve this challenge. So please remember to fill in the questionnaire directly after hosting your session. You will also receive an automated email a few hours after the session ends. I'm reminding you to do this. So I want to end by going through some next steps. Now that you have watched this video, you should send an email to community at carpentries.org informing the community development team that you have officially been onboarded as a community session host. We will add you to the discussion host topic box mailing list and you can unsubscribe from this list at any time. If you're on the Carpentry Slack workspace, I also encourage you to join the discussion host channel. All communications relevant to session host are sent through the mailing list and posted on Slack, including when it is time um, to schedule the quarterly calls. Be sure to make note of some important resources for serving in the role. Um, links to these resources are included in the description of this video um, on uh, YouTube. So the first link, the community calendar, is available on the Carpentries website and will show all upcoming community events, including um, community sessions. The second link, the community sessions etherpad, includes all upcoming calls, who is leading them, and who is signed up to attend. You may want to check in a couple of days before your scheduled call to see if you have too few individuals signed up or too many. If either scenario arises, email community at carpentries.org and members of our team um, can help get the word out about your call or can even attend your call to support as a co-host if needed. Um, finally, all the information I shared with you today can be found in the Carpentries Handbook. It should be your go-to resource for all things Carpentries, including leading a community session. So thank you so much for watching this video to onboard as a community session host for the Carpentries. We look forward to joining you at a future event.